What's up, guys? So there are some huge announcements that just came out from Celsius and Nova Wolf. Their term sheet was just released. Now we know everything about what they want to do with clawbacks. But I just want to let you know before I dive into the story that this is not approved by the judge yet. This is not approved by the SEC or the state regulators. And they are still asking for approval to continue their exclusivity. So nothing I'm sharing is set in stone. Literally nothing I'm sharing is set in stone. We will still have a vote and all of this is still subject to change. So taking a look right here, just getting into this very important part about clawbacks, essentially, which I'll get to in later in the video in more detail, those who had $100,000 or less withdrawn from the platform three months before the bankruptcy filing, there will not be a clawback if you vote yes for this plan. Those who withdrew one hundred to $250,000 can settle by giving back 27.5%, just like what is happening with custody. So this would be 27.5% that you are literally giving up and giving back to Celsius. You don't get any equity share tokens. You are just cutting your losses and saying, hey, I'm giving back this money so I can leave forever. And those who withdrew 250,000 to over a million dollars, the subcommittee, which I'll get to later in this video, will decide based upon circumstances and a million dollars plus will be pursued. So what I'm going to cover first is from White and Case about why the debtor should have exclusivity period and keep that extension. And this is where they are going to cover what I just talked about with retail clawbacks. So I'm going to get to that, explain exactly what's going on. But before I get to that, we have Centerview Partners, which is an investment banking firm basically supporting the UCC and supporting Celsius, I should say, for wanting to work with Nova Wolf. And this is Kirkland and Ellis saying that, hey, we want to extend exclusivity and we want this thing to move forward. But again, guys, remember that this is being heard before the judge on March 21st. So again, nothing I'm saying right now is set in stone. And that is very important because there are still negotiations to be had. There are still things that we can work out depending on the feedback that we give Kirkland and Ellis and the UCC. Also being heard on March 21st, is basically agreeing to this whole thing with custody that they are going to get this 27.5% haircut. So the court still needs to approve this. This has not even been approved for custody yet, but my guess is it will. And for people who have custody, they will get paid in two payments of 36 and a quarter percent. And that 27.5% that they will not get will become the debtor's property upon the effective date of the plan. But it's important to remember that we have objections to this exclusivity period. So we have Deb over at Troutman and Pepper, also representing the retail clawback group as well on Telegram. She is saying that, hey, we the ad hoc of withhold do not want Celsius to have more exclusivity. And she says basically that they haven't done enough and the bleeding must stop of all of this money. And they want the debtor's customers to propose their own plan for the assets that they were defrauded into investing with Celsius. And then we have David Adler for the borrowers, those who have loans, saying this. They said, can the plan sponsor, meaning Nova Wolf, offer the election to all borrowers regardless of where they reside? In other words, will the plan sponsor have the necessary licenses to allow borrowers in all jurisdictions to make the election identified in the term sheet? Basically, they want to make sure that they have the licenses for every single borrower all around the world. And David Adler says if the answer is no, it would make little sense to continue exclusivity for a proposal that will provide different treatment to borrowers in the same class depending on where they reside. He also says that this five-year loan term agreement is really long. In crypto world, this is an eternity, and there needs to be safeguards that this collateral will be returned, including a potential insolvency if Nova Wolf goes through Chapter 11. And basically, if Nova Wolf cannot provide adequate measures to safeguard the collateral, the ad hoc group would respectfully request that the exclusivity be terminated so that other alternative options may be explored sooner rather than later. So I wanted to start out with that before I dive into this document from White and Case saying why they should have exclusivity and why their plan with Nova Wolf is super awesome because this is not approved yet. So I don't want anybody to get freaked out or worry or 
you know, do anything rash. So I want to go through this document talking about why White and Case wants to work with Nova Wolf. They do say that there will be a competitive auction process that Nova Wolf, again, is this stocking horse, as Simon Dixon has pushed. And the UCC intends to further engage with third parties that are interested in pursuing a better transaction. And take a look here, we have the modified a date for the final bid deadline for the assets moved to April 17th, guys. So it's important, again, to remember that this is not finalized. And right now, we still have another month and a half where the UCC is taking bids. So the UCC believes that the Nova Wolf transaction currently presents the best option to maximize value, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore, the committee supports extending the debtor's exclusivity period to March 31st. So they want to have another month to do so. And they mentioned that Nova Wolf can turn the debtor's Bitcoin mining business into something very lucrative and be one of the largest mining operations in the world. And they would even like to operate their own validator nodes for things like staked Ethereum, which is the debtor's largest illiquid asset. They mentioned this whole equity share token that will be traded on the provenance blockchain. They say that at this time, no other proposal has provided an actionable solution for the retail loan portfolio and that no other bid has offered a fair market price for the debtor's illiquid assets. Now, I don't really know if this is true or not. We will see, but this is just what they're saying. Now we are talking about clawbacks and what they call preference claims. So it says here, very important, the committee, the UCC, does not intend to pursue preference actions, but they will be transferred to a litigation trust. But they say the issue for now is the extent to which preference claims will be released or transferred to a litigation trust. And I just want to read this, even though it's long, just so you understand where the UCC is coming from. They say, as a fiduciary to account holders and unsecured creditors, the committee must carefully consider and can't ignore how to address the more than $3 billion of potential preference claims. At the same time, the committee does not support pursuing preferences indiscriminately and has no interest in imposing undue burden on individuals who have already been devastated by the actions of Mr. Mashinsky and other pre-petition insiders of the debtors. So they're saying that they don't want to hurt people that have already been hurt. So that is their position. And the UCC believes that it is appropriate to release preference actions against current account holders with claims worth more than $10 that withdrew less than 100,000. And again, this goes to what I covered earlier. They will not claw you back if you withdrew less than $100,000. Personally, just in full transparency, I withdrew, I think around 115, maybe 120, I'm not quite sure, around there. So I am definitely over $100,000 when it comes to my potential clawbacks. So I just want to let you know in full transparency, there have been some comments being like, hey, dude, why don't you share exactly what your interests are in sharing this? So that's it. If you didn't know that, yes, within 90 days before the uh, bankruptcy petition, I withdrew again, like $100,000 to $120,000 worth of crypto. Also, the Nova Wolf transaction would include an offer to settle preference actions against account holders who withdrew between $100,000 to $250,000, that would be myself, on the same terms that will be offered to holders of custody, i.e. to return 27.5% of the transferred amount. So again, none of this is confirmed. We may get another plan sponsor, not even Nova Wolf, right? We may get somebody else that says, hey, we don't want any preference actions against non-insiders, no matter the amount, right? And that's where I stand. If there is an insider that took off $50,000 and they knew the platform wasn't solvent, they should be clawed back. But if there is a retail person who is very wealthy, somebody who maybe had 10, 20 million dollars, and maybe they took off 20 million dollars 60 days before the petition, and they did so because they wanted to buy a house or they did so to pay their taxes or again, just something completely unrelated to being an insider, then I personally do not think that they should be clawed back. I think it should be that simple. You're an insider, meaning you had non-public information or you didn't. So next they talk about loans and how they're going to deal with that. They also talk about sell token. So they say that the debtor's pre-petition management, meaning Alex Mashinsky, pumped the price of sell token 
as late as May 12th, 2022. On the morning of June 13th, the day that Celsius paused withdrawals, sell token had a market price of 20 cents. But between that date, June 13th, and July 13th, which is the petition date, the price of sell token moved significantly up and hit around 82 cents. They say that approximately 188 million sell tokens are associated with non-insider earn accounts. So these are people that are like not Alex, not Nuke, not Daniel. Many account holders that purchased sell were likely not aware of the manipulation of the currency conducted by the debtor's prior management. I agree. Most people that held sell token did not know that they were using customers Bitcoin to pump the price up. They did, however, make a risky investment of an uncertain nature whose value was significantly tied to the success of Celsius. So they're defending why they want to give sell token holders 20 cents rather than the petition date price of like 82 cents. Here they talk about people wanting sell in kind, but there are again significant regulatory concerns with returning the token, which is what we saw with VGX and with Voyager. And this is why they want to give 20 cents per sell token for all of these reasons. Because this is again the price that sell token traded at on the morning of the pause, before the whole sell short squeeze started. So here talking more about clawbacks, they say the committee cannot and will not sue any non-insider account holder to recover a preference payment. Again, the committee can't, but it doesn't mean that there won't be. They say that rather the committee has been asked whether it supports an unconditional and gratuitous release of all potential preference claims at this time. So the committee is saying that no, we do not support an unconditional release of all preference claims. The problem, though, is that you really have to separate between insider and non-insider. But here they say, as a fiduciary, so now they're giving their reasons for clawbacks, as a fiduciary for unsecured creditors, approximately 93% of whom did not withdraw assets during the preference period, tasked with maximizing recoveries, the committee cannot blindly release billions of dollars of potential value when creditors are slated to experience significant losses as a result of the debtor's prior management's incompetence and fraud. So what they're saying is because they have a fiduciary duty, they can't just release all of this money that could be clawed back into the estate, which is around $3 billion or so. And they do give the amount of people that have $250,000 or above or how much money, I should say, are in these categories. So they are just trying to justify their numbers here. So here again, they're talking about if you withdrew less than $100,000, you will be released from preference claims. And again, if you took out $100,000 to $250,000 in that three-month period, you can just give back 27.5%, basically as a payment to Celsius. And the downside is that you will not get any earned claims with that. So for myself, for example, since I would fall under this category, I would give them, I don't know, $35,000, maybe 40, I'm not exactly sure. And I would not get any equity share tokens for that. So it would just be like, hey, here's Celsius, here's $40,000. So that's what they're saying. Here it says the Nova Wolf transaction would transfer unreleased preference claims. So these would be the claims above $100,000 and other avoidance actions to this litigation vehicle or litigation trust that would be operated by an administrator with a fiduciary duty to all earn holders who receive interest in that entity. And working with Nova Wolf will also provide for alternative dispute resolution procedures so that this litigation vehicle and participating creditors can efficiently resolve claims without the incurrence of significant legal expenses. So there's going to be a lot to talk about about this. So if this plan goes through, guys, I will definitely talk a lot more about exactly you know, what this means. Um, am I going to be just giving them back 27.5%? But we're not there yet. We're not at that point yet. And here they talk about defenses for clawbacks. They say even if preference claims were brought by the litigation trustee, such claims are subject to defenses. The bankruptcy code provides that transfers made in the ordinary course are not subject to avoidance. But here's the kicker. Or here's what they say. Nothing about these cases or the debtor's operations prior to the petition date is ordinary, and the facts may vary for the hundreds of thousands of different cases. So we will see what happens from this. This is very interesting. 
I don't know what to make of this right now because again, this has not been approved, but I will let you guys know. And essentially they're saying there are hundreds of thousands of potential preference actions to sort out and now is not the time to do so. So again, what the UCC is wanting to do right now is not pursue these preference actions or clawbacks, but rather they say the issue is will these preference claims be released, meaning they will go away, or transferred to a litigation trust. They're not pursuing people right now. They are just proposing this to the judge and saying, these are the numbers. So zero to 100,000, 100,000 to 250, 250 to a million, and then a million plus. They're categorizing people in different ways, uh, essentially just to make sure that they don't lose this ability to do so. So take a look at this motion right here from Kirkland and Ellis. This is going to be talked about on March 21st, and this is them wanting to go ahead and go through with this Nova Wolf transaction. So they want to keep this March 31st date so that they can file their full disclosure statement with Nova Wolf. Here they talk a little bit about a toggle feature, which I talked about in my last video. It says that holders of the earn claims who vote for the plan will have the option to indicate their preference to modify their distribution to either receive a greater amount of liquid crypto or receive additional EST or MSTs. Basically, they can get more crypto or more liquidity. So Nova Wolf is the stocking horse, and in doing so, if they break up from Celsius, there's a $5 million breakup fee that they get. That's kind of nice and a maximum of $15 million to reimburse their expenses. So remember here that we have until April 17th until the final bid deadline for the assets. So that's again for the fourth or fifth time that I'm gonna say this, <laughs> that what I'm reading right now is not set in stone. This is just what they're proposing. So guys, that is it for the video. I wanna stop this video, edit it, and get it out to you as quickly as possible. So we still have about a month and a half for other companies to bid on the assets. What I've talked about in this video is not 100% going to happen. This is the term sheet, and this is just what the UCC wants to do, and obviously work with Nova Wolf, et cetera. If retail clawbacks apply to you, there is a link below to the Telegram group. Even if you withdrew less than $100,000, it would still be a good idea to join that group because again, that number could go down. We actually don't know exactly what's gonna happen. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully that number either goes away for retail non-insiders, which is what I think should happen, or it goes way up. But even that, I don't really agree. I don't think people who are not insiders should be clawed back $20 million if they just happen to be incredibly wealthy. That's kind of messed up too. So anyway, I have my thoughts on it. Obviously it affects me, so I have my own self-interests as well. So I wanted to make one additional note, which is very important that I did not address earlier in the video, and it is right here. Basically, under the debtor's proposed plan, account holders with balances under $10 will not receive a distribution and will not be entitled to receive a release of preference actions. So what this means is that even if you only withdrew $95,000, but right now in your account, or at the time of petition, I should say, you have less than $10, you will still be subject to clawbacks. Because if you took everything off and you don't have at least $10, it says right here, you will not be entitled to receive a release of preference actions. So this is very, very important if that applies to you as well. So I just wanted to add this piece because even if you only withdrew 50,000 or 40,000 or 30,000 dollars or whatever, 20,000 dollars, but it is all gone and you have less than $10 in your account at the time of bankruptcy, you will under this plan be pursued. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thanks for watching. Share this, like this, subscribe to my station if you haven't already. Until next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.